Yo, yo, yo! <laughs> it's March 15th, and welcome to my South by Southwest edition of the Redheaded Geek Show, everybody! I'm going to cover a 3D gesture device, 3D printing guns, Google shoes, and more. Check me out. As you may know, we are an Austin-based company, and our famous South by Southwest festival has been happening this March. A lot of tech-savvy folk have been here showcasing, talking, and presenting. Kim.com even presented via Skype. And yeah, that's what he looked like on that big screen. Anywho, it's been very exciting, and since I've been here at work rather than at the festival, I have been reading and living vicariously through the news. To start, a device that apparently stole the show this year, Leap Motion. A tiny 3D gesture device that sits in front of your computer and can track gestures within an eight cubic foot area. Its sensitivity is said to be 200 times more than the Xbox Kinect or Nintendo Wii. This man playing Fruit Ninja feels like he is inside the television, touching the fruit, he says. Leap Motion understands motions that come naturally. You can even zoom in or out on something on the screen. May 19th, you can run into Best Buy and get this controller for $79.99. I know I want one. Too bad I didn't get in line with the hundreds of thousands who pre-ordered this thing. Google being at South By this week was the source of incredible hype, and what they unveiled was a new smart wearable. Not glasses, it's 2013, that's really old news. Google Shoes. Now, not to upset you or anything, but this is not an actual product they are releasing. They are simply just showing off the technology. Google Shoes talk to you when you wear them. A microcontroller sits on the tongue of a pair of Adidas. And above that, a speaker provides feedback based on your movements. You sitting down, they're gonna tell you to get up. Starting a jog, they're gonna urge you to keep going. Good news, although Google has permission from Adidas, they won't be getting into the shoe biz anytime soon. But Google is currently looking to open source the information so you and me can make our own pair. Mine would say, go ahead, Daria. Keep on watching True Blood. Don't you dare get off that couch. A 3D printing panel consisted of several experts sitting and discussing how this technology is going to influence our future. And guess what? They concluded that the future is very bright. Yes, there are limitations to 3D printing, like the discussion of intellectual property and how digital files can easily be passed to others. But also realize that the opportunities at bay are immense. It offers anyone will to be innovative and sometimes quite successful. I mean, when I heard about 3D printing cars last week, I was like, man, this guy must be rich. Others might view it as an immature production technology, but the truth is, dude, even some hearing aids are 3D printed. Even aerial vehicles are made using 3D printing techniques. And with the soon to be future of 3D printing body parts, this is not new. Now, a big discussion lately is in regards to 3D printing fully functional firearms. To many, this idea is unnerving. Others, however, are large proponents of the idea. The most notable advocate belongs to a Texas gunsmith named Cody Wilson. Heard of him? He recently made headlines when demonstrating a 3D printed lower receiver for a semi-automatic rifle that can fire more than 600 rounds. Wilson appeared at South by Southwest and made even more headlines when he stated, they're real and they're not going anywhere. He believes that if this technology is going to be a meaningful innovation, then printing guns is going to be part of that. However, the panel standing by stated, it will be at least a decade or more before you're able to buy one of these guns off the shelf. So, as far as a problem, according to the experts, it's a very far away problem. Cars are getting smarter. Ooh, scary. And we're having to learn how to adapt to their smartness every day. Button for this, talking to that, it can be especially difficult if you're not used to it. And unfortunately, many car buyers don't discover issues until they get home. At this year's festival, GM co-sponsored the Interactive Technology Conference in efforts to show off their new beefed-up tech assistance team. GM, in addition to other car companies, have started staffing their dealerships with special technology experts ready to take calls. People call with so many issues because of the various devices out there, one agent said. So why not have the specialized geeks, don't worry that's what they called themselves, do what they do best. And to better understand their concerns, standalone working models of GM's current systems and devices are located in the center of their workroom. 
This way, the agents can see exactly what the customer is talking about, and if issues continue to pop up, they are able to identify and solve them quicker. I can see this really helping someone at home who doesn't know how to use those GPS thingies in their car. Well, internet, I hope you enjoyed my South by Southwest updates. And oh, found some cool tech news or have video suggestions? Leave them in the comments. Make sure to like and subscribe. See ya.